And the thing is, that, that, that because we've got a pharmaceutical dominated medical um, industry, you know, and one of the things that blew me away, like down here, is like um, just over 33% of New Zealanders are obese, you know, not overweight, <clears throat> not overweight, but clinically obese. And again, I was, I was born in 1970, and like when I went to school, there was maybe a couple of kids that were slightly chubby. There was, there was no such thing as obesity with, with children back then, but it's just, it's, um, but it's funny because, you know, even New Zealand, when we had the lockdowns and that, and when New Zealand came out of the first lockdown, like KFC or Kentucky Fried Chicken here, it's like, mate, I'm not exaggerating. They had people with um, orange vests and road cones out on the street that, that the line to the KFC drive through went for several hundred metres, you know. And people were prepared to <laughs> queue a couple of hours to get their KFC fix, eh? And it's just like... Glenn, how did you find Carnivore? Yes, yeah, interesting story, uh, Dave, from, from on my one. It was actually because of my severely disabled, intellectually and physically disabled son that um, died just over a year ago. So, um, yeah, he, he was like non-verbal and profoundly disabled, but he... Um, and towards the end of the last six months of his life, when he was sort of fading out, we ended up just switching him just to, just to meat, um, two non-starchy veggies with a bit of gravy. And he had that for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And um, because of the um, his intellectual capacity, he was very sort of primal. And whilst he was non-verbal, if he had chicken or fish, he would eat it, but he didn't really think. But, mate, if, if he had like red meat, he would just go... And it's just, yeah, he just, and as his body was fading, he just, he obviously realised that there was just, yeah, that there was something in the red meat that just sort of helped, get, you know, you know get, keep him on the track, so to speak. So um, You mentioned sarcopenia. Can you talk a little bit more about that, sarcopenia, in terms of um, disabled people? People that are in wheelchairs, naturally, that they have more muscle wastage for obvious reasons. So that sarcopenia, it's even more critical that they have like a um, like a higher amount of meat to, to help. Um, you can't prevent it when you're in a wheelchair, but you can try and slow down the rate of decline of muscle wastage. So, um, and with Amon, when he was in care, like one of the previous providers that he was with. Um, Unfortunately, they just loaded them up on on the white rice, the white pasta, and the potatoes because it's cheap, you know. And um, the irony is, they were apart from him, they were all obese because we insisted that he had like just a couple of veggies and, and the meat, you know. So, um, and and because they're in wheelchairs, um, and especially if they're like got significant intellectual disability, so they're not even like you know like hand, you know, they're pushed around and all that. They're obviously not burning off as much energy. So it's even more important that they get the uh, nutrient density of, of, of red meat. So. And for me, like I, I actually had three att attempts at a whole food plant-based diet. And the first time was probably over, over 20 years ago. And then each time I did it, um, after a few months, it felt like a light, that, light bulb that was dimming, you know. And, and so, and then the second and the third time, um, I sort of thought, oh, yeah, obviously I'm not doing it right. And I'd, I'd look up, you know, Dr. Gregor and Neil Barnard, e e et cetera. And, and I just sort of thought, oh, look, yeah, obviously not not doing it right. But just physically and mentally, it just, yeah, I, I don't I don't believe it's a diet for us. Eh? So, And then so, yeah, my son basically motivated me and, um, yeah, to, to try it and, yeah, um, but there's some interesting stuff in there, Dave, because like and like I'm from New Zealand and I apologize in advance for my accent, but um so and I had a couple of mates that ended up having prostate cancer, so I ended up going along to my local doctors um and just said like I just want my full blood work and you know, and they checked out my prostate and um all the rest of it and and my doc he did my blood pressure and that and that was like um 110 over 72 on that and and i said to my doc i said hey look just to let you know mate i'm i'm actually eating a meat prominent diet i, I didn't freaking say that i was carnival for obvious reasons you know but i said like i do eat quite a lot of meat in that you know and um so i said look i'm expecting my ldl will will go up and, and all the rest of it you know and and anyway and my doc here goes oh look you know hey if yeah if your ldl goes up a bit 
I've got no problems with it. Like your your blood pressure is exceptional. Like you're a good weight. You're looking good. Yada yada. If it goes up a bit, we won't be too concerned. But if yeah, if it goes up, you know, more than a more than a bit, then we might just have to revisit it and that. And I was like, no, no, no worries. And so then um, and so then the blood work came back, and the next thing I get a ring from one of the nurses, and and they said um. Oh, um, they want to put you on statins, and I, like I'm 54 in um, just under a week's time, and 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 you know I've also read up on stuff, and I thought, well, I'm not going on statins, but um, my my LDL had um had had doubled, and I'd gone to like 7.2 or 278, depending you know what measurements you use, but my glycer- my triglycerides were 0.5 or 44, and um. Anyway, and so the nurse just like, yep, they want to put you on. Um, yep, we want. Why don't you go on statins? Your, your LDL's gone through the roof. Blah blah blah. Right? And then I just I said, I'm not going on statins, you know. And then um, they said, okay, well the other thing is, you you can you can come back in, and um, we've got like a lifestyle sort of coach, um, nutrition guy, a, a part of at, at our medical clinic, and you can come and talk to him. And I do, I do just want to share this with the audience, um, but it was, it was an absolute crack up day because so I go in, mate, and, and the guy, he looks at me and he's just like looks me up and down like, what the hell? Like, because like I'm um, 185 centimeters and 78 kilos, so and I feel awesome, man, on carnival ray, to be honest, mentally and physically, you know. And, and the guy looks at me and he goes, ah, huh. and I said what? And he goes. Oh, you're not, you know, normally the people that come to see me with their blood markers and all that, they're obese and got metabolic health issues. You look like you're in primo health, eh, you know? And I was like, man, I feel really good, eh, you know? And, um, and he's like, oh, look, you know, you, anyway, so he got on the whole LDL thing and it's just like, you know, play the recorded message, n- n- not criticising him, but it's just like, yep. So as a result of that, I then, um, yeah, so... I, ba- and the, I then basically went back onto the whole whole food plant based diet, and so ba- basically back to the legumes, back to the whole grains. Um, the only um, animal protein that I was eating was um, fish, and 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 a, and a little bit of dairy. And he's just like, yeah, we've got to get those. They've got to get that LDL right down, and blah blah blah. So I basically went back onto that, and I went back onto the um, the, the you know what I'd experienced before, which was bloating. Uh, heaps of farting and gas you know just and basically just so i went from feeling awesome to feeling sluggish and, and um yeah and i think the community the carnival community would, would say too it, it's interesting because what, what i find is when you eat a vegan diet you you 100 feel full in terms of you know your stomach expanding but you don't feel satiated and for me on my carnival diet I don't feel full in terms of um, your gut expanding, but you feel satiated, you know. So, um, so then I went back and I did that for about a month, and and honestly, I just thought, screw this, man. I, you know, I, I felt way better before, and um, yeah, I'm basically going back to what I was, and then um, and then the docs, I basically had a thing um, for four months' time. They wanted to redo my bloods and. I haven't been back, mate. I've got no intention of going back uh, unless, unless I've got a broken leg or, or something like that, you know. So, um, I, I find sure. that really interesting with the lifestyle coach because I, I feel like this is a little bit like what I did um, back in the day when I was first doing low carb. And so I had all these great results. I was feeling good, best I've ever been. Everyone Sorry, around man. me recognized you I've never seen you looking so good. You, you, you know, um, but I allowed myself to be talked out of it. And, yeah. and basically that's what's happened, right? You acknowledge you in the best shape you've ever been. The lifestyle coach was shocked that you weren't, you know, like um, obese, I guess, when you walked in. Right. Cause that's what, yep. that's what he was expecting. Right. And, and so he, yep. so he, you're you're in good shape, but still you need to be eating legumes and and lentils, and so yeah, you were feeling good, but you sort of went okay. Well, maybe maybe he knows something I don't. You went back to whole food, plant based, yeah. and yeah. Then the 
bad results started again. Yep. And because one thing yeah. I should have said is, because I did, yeah, 100%, because let's face it, Dave, they're the experts, eh, you know, and and, um, mm-hmm. and so one of the things that made me go back to the um, to, to the path of light, so to speak, was I also did some research on the lean mass hyper responder, and, and, and I, I, like, I, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that I, I come under that category, just, yeah, and it's just like, um, yeah. But I, I just want to share like another funny story with you about the medical fraternity. And so, and well, I didn't know what a hemorrhoid was. And so, like one day, I basically had an hemorrhoid down downstairs, sort of thing. And but anyway, so and this thing just basically just blew up from nothing. And um, so I went along not to my normal doctors, but to 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 after hours medical centre. And I, ex- I explained what had happened, and um, and she obviously the nurse obviously must have been able to click that it was a hemorrhoid, and um, and of course she goes, oh, what should oh what's your diet like? And um, and again, I, I didn't say that I'm carnivore, not because I'm ashamed of that, but I just don't want the aggro to be honest. And um, I said, oh, um, oh, I'm a sort of meat 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 dominant diet, you know. And she goes, oh, okay. And then I went through to, to see the doctor, and he had a look at it, and he said, "Oh, um, oh." And the f- first thing he said, he said, he goes, um, oh, "I see you're on that paleo diet," <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I am," you know. <laughs> and uh, and he goes, oh, "Okay," and um, and he says, "Oh, well, look, you know, basically drop your trail sort of thing. Have, have a look," and he says, "Oh, no, yep, you've got a hemorrhoid and that, you know," and. Um, yeah, and then he sort of he, he touched like briefly on my diet. I didn't say that I was carnivore, and then I basically and then I had to go along to my normal doctors again, like um like a week later for a checkup, and that's like so it's a medical practice. And so this time I saw a, a different doctor to what I saw about the LDL and all the rest of it, you know. And so this doc, um, so she had a look at the hemorrhoid and that, and um, and we got talking and that, and so she goes. First thing, man, is I see you on a paleo diet. And I said, yeah, I am. Do you go for a bowel motion every day? And I said, no. I said, um, I used to be on, on a vegan diet, a whole food plant-based, and I, I'd go for a bowel motion two to three times a day. But I said, I find on my, on my current diet, I go either every day or every, every second day. And she's like, oh, so you're not having a daily bowel motion? And I said, no, I'm not. And then she said, um, and, and when you go for a bowel motion, is it a full bowel motion? You know, do you, and I said, yeah, no, it is. Like, yep, when I go, I feel like I've had a good clean out when I've been for a bowel motion. And she's like, right. And um, she goes, um, I'm just going to put you on laxatives. And, I, and she gets her pen and she starts to like write out the script. And I said, oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Um, I don't want to waste your time. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not taking those. And she goes, uh, blah blah blah. And I said, look, I'm, I'm not taking them. I, I don't, I don't take any medication at all, and never have done. And I, I don't, I don't want to take that. And she's like, look, I just think even if you just go on it for like one or two months, I just think we need to get your bowels moving more regularly. And I said, with true respect, there's nothing wrong with my bowels. I don't think that you have to have a um, bowel motion every single day but and then so straight away she diagnosed me on based on my diet and then we had a bit more of a chat about things and that and then I said I said oh and, and she was like oh so we, when you go for a bowel motion is, is there a straining and I said no nah, there's not it's just it, you know it, it's fine it's completely normal and that and um and I said, and this is why I find it quite weird that I've that I've got this hemorrhoid. And we started talking a bit more, and then she said something about exercise. And I said, oh, I think I know what's happened. I said because this thing came up about popped up about two or three hours after I'd, I'd done a decent workout when I've been doing deadlifts and squats. So with those sort of, and she goes, oh yeah, no, no, that, that can definitely cause the hemorrhoid. And I was like. Oh, that's great because now, now I know what's caused it. It, it. It's got nothing whatsoever to do with my diet. It's obviously just one of those things, and the thing settled down by itself. And um, I haven't had any any problems since. But yeah, I don't want to bore the audience, but I just I know like like these doctors, eh? Like once they get into a thing, it's just that they go down a certain pathway, you know. So 
Yeah, they um it does seem like, you know, there's the it's almost like, you know, you have the situation where you're at a dinner party or you're out at a pub or something and you're talking to a friend and you you start to ask a question and it's almost like the friend you're sitting next to or the person you've just met that's sitting next to you thinks, oh, I know what he's going to ask. So they just give you this pre-recorded answer they've got in their head to the particular question. And, Absolutely. you know, they're halfway through answering you thinking, no, that's not the question I was going to ask. Um, but it feels that that's a little bit the way the doctors are, you know, it's like they see you and they see this symptom, this symptom, this symptom. I don't need to ask any more questions. I know exactly what this is. Yep. Yeah. And I th- yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And it's also I, I don't know what it's like over there, Dave, in Japan or previously when you're in Aussie, but here there's a fifteen minute um window um for the appointment and that's also like how's your day and you know, so there's limited time. So I think it's just like as an element of play, play the recorded message, you know. And um the other thing I find, I I, I definitely think that um carnivorism is, is very much like the matrix the movie and it's it is taking the red pill you know and most people take the blue pill and um and like another observation that i've made is having previously tried the vegan thing three different times over that 20 year period i've got to say by gosh veganism is infinitely more easy than it is carnivore um, f- from that social stigma sort of thing, e- even more so now, Dave, because it's like you go to a restaurant, dude. There's always a vegan option on there, and it's like if you say that you're vegan, there, there's an, there's a halo around you because it's like, oh, you're helping to save the planet and your, your animal welfare and all that. But it's like if you say you you know like carnivore, it's like, and that's what I want to say to the community. It's just like. And all the people that you've had on, they all dance to the beat of their own drum, you know. And I, I personally think it takes quite a lot of courage because you, you're swimming against the mainstream t- uh, tide, eh? Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit of... Uh, you have to be a certain kind of person or you have to have got to a certain position in life where it's like you've just tried so many things it's just uh, okay well i'll give this a go yep you know i'm i'm running out of options <laughs> i need to i need to try something else um so with your carnival journey like the stint you're on now when when did this start like how how long have you been doing it this time so I've been full carnivore for about four months. And when I say full carnivore, mm-hmm. I mean like as in full carnivore. And um, before that, I was sort of like, I did a bit of sort of keto vore. And then I went, um, I don't know if you've seen Sean um, Amara, so um, on, on the net. So I sort of went down his pathway a little bit in terms of doing like yoga and, and um, kefir or kefir, however you say it. And um and I was having a bit of sauerkraut and a little bit of kimchi each day because it was like that whole um, gut microbiome. So I did that for about three months prior. And then, um, but now I'm just, um, yeah, 100% carnival. And and the thing is with me is I, and this is just, I just want to share my experience. I'm not judging anyone else on, on the carnival journey, but I, I don't have coffee or tea or anything like that. I just, um, I just, I have um, grass fed ruminant meat. Um, and I have basically about 25 grams of raw liver that I blitz up with a couple of electrolytes in, in the morning, and um, and I have a tin of sardines each day, and it's a, and I just have that same thing every day. And the majority of my red meat is um, is ground beef or, or mince, they, they call it here. Just I find that yeah, it's a bit more cost effective and it, it still tastes nice, and it's just. It's just, it's incredible, mate. It's rocket fuel way, you know. It's just, and the thing that I find is just, for me, Dave, probably, yeah, like just almost 54, the, the thing I love, I cherish it, is the absolute simplicity, you know. Yeah, I just eat the same thing every day. There, there's, there's no recipes. There's no shopping lists. Um, my cooking is basically a cast iron a pan, and if I have the odd steak, I, I use in the barbecue, um, gas barbecue, but predominantly it's just on the, you know, the, 
I'm cleaning up the dishes as, as a breeze. It's just I, I just I just absolutely cherish the simplicity, you know. And because one of the things I've, I've given a bit of thought of too, Dave, is like we're the only species that actually eats for entertainment, you know. If, if you look at a cow, it's happy to eat the grass. The dolphins are eat, eat eat the fish, you know. For whatever reason, we've become the species where we have to get like gratification from food and alcohol and and, and coffee and hey, each to their own, but. Yeah, I, I just find it, it's a it's a source of fuel, but I I do generally um, enjoy eating it at the same time. But it's it's not that addictive thing where you eat some Easter eggs and then you want want some more. You know, it's just um, I, I enjoy the food, but it's just because I think because it's so satiating, you don't yeah. And and the other thing that's been a game changer for me is I, I eat twice a day. I just I have breakfast and I and I have dinner. You know, and I don't feel hungry in between. Um, when I was vegan, I had three meals a day. Plus, I was always snacking because, yes, and I, I I totally get it now because it's like I believe that your body is is more sophisticated than what we realise. And so, when you aren't getting those nutrients, it's it's not necessarily the calories you're craving. I think your body's just saying that it hasn't has it, yeah it hasn't met its nutrient threshold, and that's why it signals those hunger uh, hunger signals. You know. Yeah, it's uh, your body's just crying out for nutrition, and um, yeah, you're you're busy pumping stuff into it that your body's going, no, not this stuff, not this stuff. That's not it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Getting warm, but that's not it. Yeah, it's almost like filling up your your your, your car a petrol tank with water. You know, you like you yeah, the tank's full, but the the engine's not really running. No. And uh, see, and, and this is the thing, right? You take you did that for a week and your car wouldn't start. You eventually take it into the mechanic. The mechanic's gonna say to you, What are you doing? Why yeah. are you filling the engine with water? And like so the mechanic has got the brains to go back and say, It's not, you know, it's not that we need to give this car a statin, it's that what you're pumping into the car is the wrong thing. The mechanic mm -hmm. can do that. Why can't the doctor? Why can't the yeah. doctor look at the vet can do it? The mechanic can do it. Why can't the doctor do it and go, hang on, tell me about what you're eating? Hmm. And the thing is, that, that, that because we've got a pharmaceutical dominated medical um, industry, you know, and one of the things that blew me away, like down here, is like um, just over 33% of New Zealanders are obese. Yeah, you know, not overweight, <clears throat> not overweight, but clinically obese. And again, I was, I was born in 1970, and like when I went to school, there was maybe a couple of kids that were slightly chubby. There was there was no such thing as obesity with with children back then. But it's just it's um, but it's funny because you know even New Zealand when we had the lockdowns and that, and when New Zealand came out of the first lockdown, like KFC or Kentucky Fried Chicken here, it's like. Mate, uh, I'm not exaggerating. They had people with um, orange vests and road cones out on the street. That that the line to the KFC drive-through went for several hundred meters, you know, and people were prepared to <laughs> queue a couple of hours to get their KFC fix. Eh? and it's just like it's like a concert or something. Yeah, you know, and because like our special needs son, when he was still alive, like the nature of his conditions and that, like he was in the hospital multiple times a year, and. And so, like, I, I saw the health system firsthand, and it's just, you just, it's basically the majority, you know, his issues were genetic and um, unfortunate for him, but, like, our hospital systems here in New Zealand, we just, you know, we just clogged up with diabetes clinics, and, you know, it's just, it's just unhealthy people. Yeah. Um, so, actually, this talking about this area brings up a, a question that I have. So you're from New Zealand and I've, I've heard there's only two countries in the world that allow pharmaceutical companies to advertise and that's mm -hmm. us and New Zealand. Yeah, correct. And yeah. yeah. I, when I hear New Zealand, it always surprises me because I always feel like, Australian people kind of have the same attitude to things as New Zealand people do. Yes. And I can't imagine this going down very well in Australia. So I just, I wonder, 
Um, I, I wonder what the feeling is generally about that in New Zealand. Yeah, I, I knew that stat, Dave, and very few people do, you know. And um, yeah, it, it's interesting. And, and like you do, you, you see the ads on TV and on the radio, and and and, and it'll be um, like a cholesterol lowering drug or um, a, asthma thing, and it'll say, you know talk to your doctor today about ABC. It could help you take things to another level sort of thing, you know. You're thinking, what what the heck, eh, you know. And, um, but, you know, and it's just, it's, I think it's the same in New Zealand. Like, like our, history, our health system, like virtually every country in the world, it, it's close to collapse, mate, you know. it's We're inundated with, with, with um, um, metabolically um, unhealthy people w- with a host of conditions, and um, but the system is it's just um, the, the solution is to just keep on sending more firefighters to try and put out the fire, you know, rather than actually like just looking at what's causing the fire in the first place, you know. So yeah, maybe we should stop the petrol dripping on the the lit flame over there rather than or extinguish the flame rather than go around putting out the spot fires. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Nice. I mean, my feeling is this is not really going to improve in the short term because there's just too many people are making too much money out of it. How is how how is the Ozempic kind of thing going in New Zealand? Is that is that available for sale in New Zealand? Um, I, I, that's one thing I haven't really followed too much because, um, yeah, one of the things you sort of, yeah, you, you sort of associate with people that are like-minded. So my own um, group of close people, you know, aren't really like obese and that. So, yeah, but it, it, it will be because it's just like, um, it, it, it's the solution, mate, for most people because most people don't want to modify their behaviour, you know. So um, it's... um. It, it, it is interesting, but even here, like like if you look at New Zealand, and like we're, like we're blessed because it's like like all our meat, all our ruminant meat is basically grass fed. You know, there's there's no such thing as grain fed here. And and to be fair, even if there was, I would still eat eat, eat the grass fed myself. It, it just as a personal choice because I know I know a lot of the carnivores have got a different um, thing, but I think if I'm going to eat the optimum human diet. I also want to be eating an animal that also ate the um, optimal diet, you know. But even in New Zealand, the, the, you know, there's more of a more of a push as, as there is in most Westernised countries um, with the whole, um, you know, veganism and, and you know, um, Greta Thunberg and, and, and saving the environment. And because um, even with me, mate, to be honest, like when I went down the vegan thing, the health wasn't my, my dominant priority, you know my main one was was basically around the environmental thing and then when i did a bit more research into it i, I realized well it's actually yeah like if you've got if you're eating grass you know pasture raised animals that that's more sustainable um than um than, than producing plant foods which which rely heavily on um synthetic chemical fertilizers so uh yeah yeah um so have any of your friends um, adopted this way of eating or been interested in in how you're eating? Not really, because because I do keep it on the lowdown, you know, to, to, to a certain degree. And coming back to what you um, what I was saying before about this, the social aspect, like um, yeah, I, I'm I'm a bit of an introvert too, which and I'm coming on here to help just basically help our cause, so so to speak. But it's just like um. Yeah, and that's one of the things that, that I, 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 although I met a client of mine recently and he's just gone carnival and I was like high five and I was like, welcome aboard, bro, eh? you know, and um, yeah, so, um, but yeah, it's, it's not really something that I go sort of like, you know, pushing, but even to be fair, when I was veganism too, I just sort of like, I've got a live and let live sort of an attitude and, and I think people have got to find it for themselves, you know, and you know, most of the people that you've interviewed, I, I, I don't think it's any coincidence that the people are generally 50 years or older because it, you get to a certain stage in your life, you feel comfortable in your own skin and, yeah, you have, yeah. But I, I sort of think that people have sort of more or less got to find it for themselves, which is what I found mainly on YouTube and that where I sort of started coming across um, the, the stuff on all day, so... But um, the only the, there's only one aspect that I could say, like in terms, 
I don't think the environmental thing is justified. The, the animal welfare thing certainly isn't justified because if you eat a um, if, if you eat a cow, you know that could sustain a family, you know, for probably a year. With you know, the plants, you know, the, even the worms, you know, it definitely kills more more life forms than that. But I do think the one thing that has merit is that um, we, we can support a, our current population of eight billion if everyone ate grass fed meat. Um, absolutely, you know, and um, but there was a there was a documentary on YouTube, I think it was like a while ago, and and the guy, an American rancher, and he's he's doing the grass fed thing and that, and they put this question to him, and and um, and and he he rotated the animals, and, uh, very holistic, you know, and they put the question to him, mate, and they said, um, yeah, but not everyone could, you know, if everyone ate this, you know, blah blah blah, you know, like um the way you're producing the meat with your cattle, it can't feed the world. And and the guy's comeback was this epic. And he goes, absolutely. My job isn't to feed the world. My job is to feed my local community. Yeah, uh, that's very nice. If someone someone came to you and they said, Glenn, you're looking, you're looking really fit and healthy. I want this too. What do I need to do, and how can I stick to whatever it is? What would you say to them? I I try and I try and get them on. I try and get them onto my diet. We have to say, again, this is my own personal opinion, but I'd say just go 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 for the ruminant meats and um, have a tin of sardines each day because the um, the the extra stuff that they have in there. And I'd, I'd I'd also say to them like read two books. You know, as um. Toxic Superfoods by uh, Sally Norton, um, just for the oxalates. And, and, but I'd say, for me, Dave, the book that's been an absolute game changer is, is this one here. Um, G- Georgia Ede, Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind. And I'd say anyone involved in the, um, considering get involved or even involved in the carnival community, buy this book, read this book, share this book it's not just about the um, um, psychological aspect although the lady is a, a psychiatrist but it's an absolute game I've, I've, and i've sort of modified my own um thing and and her, her book is so fascinating when she was a psychologist a psychiatrist at one of the universities all the vegans turning up with the anxiety and the depression and um bipolar and all that and just yeah so her book is very and she talks about the um antidepressants and, and all the rest of it you know so um but yeah it's such a game to, and a book it's not just about them just solely about the mental side it, she's very much alone if you get the if you get the diet right and you get the metabolic uh, health right every, every everything will flow and um as a role as for sold of reading her book I, I made a couple of tweaks to my own um journey and one is that i um i dropped dairy altogether including butter um yeah she touches on that in the book and and the other thing that i dropped is the eggs as, as well and so i don't know that but like she talks about in the book like obviously the yolks nutrient dense but the egg white is designed to basically a, um, a force field that basically protects the actual um egg yolk because the, the shell was porous and and so anything coming in it, it's designed you know and so dairy and um and and particularly the egg white has got a lot of anti-nutrients in it you know and um reading her book i just sort of thought yeah i've just gone for that interesting yeah ruminant meat mate it's just it's um yeah and again like i have that little bit of liver every day and uh, man i I wouldn't do it without that little bit of liver you know about 25 grams or so you know that's what i I wanted to ask you you said you blitz up the the liver with your electrolytes yeah. so yep. uh, i've heard this i've heard my mum say this in australia so i guess uh, being in japan i've never heard of that is that like food processor or something yeah like, like you yeah, basically like like a, a vitamix it's not brain of vitamix but oh. but like if you think something like a vitamix type blender and it's just um and because um yeah the carnival diet it doesn't have a lot of vitamin c and i know that you don't need a lot of vitamin c but um if, if people do their research on vitamin c as a uh, sorry um liver it, it's off the chart mate you know on on virtually mm. every nutrient it's got 
massively more um, vitamin C than blueberries or kale um, without mm. any antioxidants. And um, the thing is with the liver, and I'm the same, mate, it's like fishy raw, it's just like, you know, but but now I just have a little bit of, um, bit of potassium and um, magnesium citr um, citrates um, with my raw liver every morning. And I can honestly say, hand on heart, mate, I love it, eh? It's just my body's got wow. adjusted to the taste. Same with the tin of sardines, obviously, in, in um, just water, not in oil. When I first started eating sardines, I was, I was gagging, mate, because it's like the smell and the taste in that. But now that I've got used to them, I, I can't, <laughs> I'm not saying it's just, it's like the kid in the candy store, mate. Eh? I, I think your body mm. adjusts. And, and it, I, I, yeah, I, I think, you know, I still believe that we're primal, mate. Us, I still think that we're cave people, right? Eh? We we think we're more sophisticated than what we are, but our genes are virtually the same as our ancestors from three hundred thousand years ago. So, um, and that's mm. why I, I, I don't understand that how people say, "Oh, you don't need liver and blah blah blah." Like, why wouldn't you? Liver, it's just it's just off the Richter scale for for so many different things, you know. And um, but I'll share one, and if it's if if it's information overload, just edit this out. But but before what I was doing, I was, I was having a hundred, around about a hundred grams of, of um, raw liver twice a week. And when I did that, um, like a couple of hours later, when when you, when, when you pass urine, the bulb would be like fluorescent yellow because obviously the B vitamins, your body's like flushing them out, you know. And um, and then I, and this is just for my own sort of research. I was thinking about myself something. I thought, well. What if instead of having it like a couple of times a week, because it's so dense, why don't I just have like a small piece, like around 25 grams, and I just have that seven days a week? And and now I don't flush out the excess and that. It just, it, it is honestly for me, it's like having a multivitamin each day. And I just take that little bit and it just, it just, just, it just keeps you ticking over. And just, yeah, I, I would strongly say to people, go, give it a go, eh? Because it's just, to me, it just, it just it just takes it to another level. Mm, nice. Um, so, what is the number one benefit you have experienced personally on carnivore that w makes you not want to go back to any other style of eating? Um, I'd, I'd say it's a tandem. It, it's um, it's the it's ultimately it's the physical benefit. And, and, and the mental benefit, you know. So the physical benefits, then it, that mentally makes you feel good. The mental benefits make you makes you feel uh, f physically, it makes you feel good. But it's just um. But I also like like yeah, I work as an insurance broker here in Napier and um, New Zealand, and most of my clients are going to see them on my push bike uh, bicycle, and it's just it just aligns with with my overall philosophy in life these days, which is just. You know, keep it simple, stupid, eh? You know, it's just, I, I just love the simplicity, mate, you know, and I don't eat takeaways and, and um, yeah. And just one thing, if I can, David, just want to sort of touch on is um, one, one of the things, I've just got a couple of notes here, is like I know one of the, pe you know, the people talk about the, the cost factor, but for me, carnival is... I, I, Undoubtedly, mate, it, it definitely saves me money. You know, it, it's more cost effective than than eating the, you know, standard American diet or whatever, or the whole food version of a standard American diet before. And the, the reason's been it's like I only eat two meals a day, mainly ground beef. I only drink water and the odd bit of bone broth, so no tea or coffee. So you save money on that. I, I generally don't eat out because to me it's just that that's like a waste of money, like. When I eat out, mate, and that's the other thing, I just I end up I end up getting a steak, you know, and it's just it it's just such a waste because when you say, look, I don't want the salad or I don't want the veggies or the fries and that, then they don't give you any extra meat, and yeah, it's just such a waste. And I think uh, if it's like you know my family member's birthday, or something like that, I'll go for a special occasion, but um, I don't generally go out. And it's like, why would you, mate? You I don't need a recipe or a chef, mate. I've got my cast iron pot and my red meat, you know. And um, but the other big one is like, there's no food waste, Dave. You know, like in the past, man. Like, you know, your, your veggies and your fruit, you're always, 
always every week we're throwing some food away you know and like now for my own food there there's no waste mate i'll just stock up the freezer and um yeah the one thing I, I, which does crack me up i always sort of think like going carnival man like you need a bigger fridge and a freezer and you pretty much don't need a pantry eh, you know so uh, that, that's right I, I mean i can't remember the last time i opened the pantry <laughs> yeah um yeah. but even wow. ripping around the supermarket dave eh, you'll be the same it's just like you're not going and you're just like on this place you're heading down to the meat section just yeah, you know, st stocking up and um a few sins of sardines and if i'm getting low on my beef tallow you know buying up a tub of beef tallow it's just i'm i'm in and out within five minutes the only the only thing where i'm just like mm, what you know thinking it's just like oh yeah such, such and such is on special you know or lamb chops is on special i could call cool, stock up on a few of those you know that's the only decision that i have to make eh, around food yeah uh, it, it's awesome like where i live i'm basically opposite a supermarket so i can cross the road with the lights go into the supermarket get my meat and eggs go through the checkout and be back for the next change of lights to get back across the road. <laughs> but if I'm, if I'm going in to do shopping for the family generally, I'll be in there for an hour just mm -hmm. wandering the aisles, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it is, you know, like, um, and I look back on my old life and I was like, with a bit of WTF, you know, because sometimes we're like, you know, come home and say, say to my wife, oh, you know, um, Oh, what should we make for dinner? Oh, no. And, oh, we'll get a takeaway, eh, you know? And then by the time you ring up for the takeaway, mate, and then you go down and pick it up and bring it back in there, it's just like, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's like, mate, I'm eating within 10 minutes, eh, you know? And it's like, like you know, my, my food prep and washing up is, is 12 minutes tops, you know? It's, um... Yeah, it's it's beautiful, eh? Like the the simplicity of, of, of the thing. It's just um, and I think for me personally, I just think like again with um Georgia Ede, what she says in her book, you know, I think you know you're putting the right fuel on the car. Um, you know, it's said, the only difference is instead of putting petrol in, mate, we're now putting rocket fuel on there, eh? You know. Um. So, Glenn, do you have a way of reaching out to you if people want to get in touch? Not really, because I'm not really on sort of social media, and um, and it's interesting because I've noticed a lot of the other people on on your carnival um thing that have basically said the same thing, you know, like um, I, and I think it's it's funny, yeah, like most of the people that I've read between the lines, the people that you've interviewed, are, are sort of introverts as well, you know, so um, they're not the really this, and I'm I'm seeing like that, yeah, I don't really sort of shout it from the rooftop, you know, it's just if someone asks me about it and just says, oh, you know. This is what you want to be doing. So, um, but I'll just sh I'll share like down at the local um, swimming complex, they've got a sauna in there, and there's a is a um, big Maori guy down there, and he's 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 really big, but he's basically started walking and all that. And I've had a couple of chats to him, and I was just telling him about the. I said, look, man, you got to focus on the diet, man. It's awesome what you're doing, the exercising and all that, you know. And um, and put it into context, the other day he's, and I said to myself, I basically told him. What, what you know, just discuss with you and that, you know, and uh, and then the next time I saw him down there, mate, he goes, Bro, man, he said, I went to the supermarket after that, and I just loaded up on the red meat, man, and I'm still eating a bit of veggie and all that, but I've definitely cut back on the carbs and all that. And he said, What a game changer, man, I've dropped another few kilos, and just I just feel awesome, eh, you know, and it's just, and so that's where, like, for me, I'm more than happy to to give someone heaps of tips and, 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 sh and share my knowledge. You know? And what I would say to people, if, if people are thinking about doing it, just 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 give it for, try it for three months. And if it doesn't work for you, go back. But, but, but you've got nothing, you've got nothing to lose, eh? But for me, man, I've, I've, I've honestly physically and, and, and mentally um, just, yeah, I never felt better.